Hi, and thanks for tuning in to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Now, before I get into the episode, just wanted to put this little piece up front. The episode you're seeing, I filmed about uh, three or four weeks ago, so it's been some time since I've been able to get it out to air. I took some holidays this summer, so kind of delayed uh, me getting into editing and getting this out. And at the time of this video, the full uh, breadth of the GM Bolt recall was not yet uh, announced. So about a week or so after I did this uh, review, a week and a half, uh, GM has come out and now recalled all bolts for all model years, including 2022 models that have been shipped already, including the bol both the Bolt EV LT and the Bolt EUV models, their LT and Premier. So all the bolts now are under, subject to the recall for the battery fires. And again, I want to just stress, folks, that this is under uh, under probably a, an abundance of caution on GM's part for recalling all of them. Obviously, there's a problem that they've identified with a few. Remember, over 100,000 bolts have been shipped and delivered over since 2017. And there's been about a dozen or so fires uh, to, to, the rec to my recollection. So take that into account. Now, uh, obviously, what GM is, uh, is telling owners to do now of not fully charging and charging outside and doing all this stuff is very inconvenient. I get it. And I've received some emails and comments from owners that have saying, look, this has been going on for a year now, and I'm getting pretty frustrated. I do feel your pain. I really do. Um, and I understand what you're going through, and, and I can certainly... Um, feel for you. However, I know that GM is trying to do what they can to fix this problem and you know to continue to build a really good product because the vast majority of bolt owners, the vast vast majority, have no issues at all. And I see bolts driving around all over the time, all the time. Even on a road trip, we we bumped into some bolts that were doing some long distance driving. So I just wanted to let you know that 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 is and and out of this. Um, from what I'm reading now, out of this recall, those owners are going to actually get new battery packs. Um, I believe they're still in conjunction with LG Energy, but and they're also going to get a bit more range. I think up to eight to 10, or ten percent more range. So, as you know, GM is trying to say, look, we know it's an inconvenience, we know it's a problem, we get it. We're going to give you a brand new pack, not just fix the module, fix the problem, but give you a brand new pack. To my understanding. Um, and also, that pack is going to consist of some more range and, and newer newer battery chemistries, newer technology. So it looks like everybody's being upgraded, but the way I read it. But again, the best person to speak to will be your local dealer or phone your local 1-800-GM number, depending on the U.S. or the States. So let me get into the review episode. So here you go. But I wanted to just preface by this information. And thanks again for watching. All right, and hello, thank you very much for joining me for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as you saw, and I've got this part two, I guess, of my Bolt series, because the last review was for the Bolt EV. This is for the brand new 2022 GM Chevrolet Bolt EUV. The EUV standing for Electric Utility Vehicle. First, I want to thank GM Canada again for letting me use of this press vehicle for a few days to boot around the greater Toronto area, put some kilometers on it, and talk to you about my thoughts and impressions about this all-new vehicle. So, let me get right into it. Now, as I said, this is all new for 2022 from GM. They've added a second bolt to the stable of all-electric bolts in the EUV packaging. And you know, folks, in my initial take on this is I really, really, really like this vehicle. Um, you know, that extra bigger size, that extra bigger space, and same, sim similar, and if not same, handling characteristics really make this an excellent vehicle because you, if you watched my last Bolt review video, you saw that I gave it a big thumbs up, and this is no different. What is different in this vehicle is, of course, the design. This is based on the, the new Bolt redesign, but it's got its own character. It's got same similar headlights, similar tail lights, that kind of stuff, but there is no shared sheet metal on this vehicle compared to the 2022 Bolt EV. So I like that. It gives it a unique styling, and of course, compact SUVs are all the rage. They are, you know, the SUVs and pickups, as you folks know, are the best-selling vehicles in North America and in most parts of the world. So this is going to do very well, in my opinion. What they've given you on this uh, this new chat, it's the same chassis, but what they've done is they've extended it by six inches. So this EUV is six inches longer than the Bolt EV, 
And where you see that noticeable difference really is in the wheelbase where they've added three inches and they've transferred that three inches into the rear back seat. Now, if you remember on the Bolt EV, and I'll, I'll show you a quick video uh, in this uh, review as well of me trying to get my uh, big butt here out of, in and out of the rear seat. Um, but you saw that it was a little, you know, not too bad to get in, but with that roof. So we'll see how the roof line fares here because this is very slightly taller, very slightly wider, if not almost the same, but it's the length that they've stretched out. And they've put that three inches, as I mentioned, in the back seat for rear leg row, and it really shows. And you'll see when I get into the back seat. Now they've stuck with the contemporary design, of course, in the interior, and I'll show you some of that uh, coming up when I talk just briefly about the interior, because it really is not much different than the Bolt uh, EV that I did. Um, but some of the, uh, the uniquenesses for this vehicle is that they do offer some additional capacities and capabilities and features and benefits, i.e. you can get 360 camera views, you can get um, adaptive cruise control. You can even up for Super Cruise, which is a GM Cadillac's uh, equivalent to Tesla's autopilot. And I've got a little video that I'll insert in here a little bit later about my quick driving around with Super Cruise. So you'll see what that's all about. Um, it's got the same electronic precision shift uh, console with the uh, one pedal driving. I've been driving this in one pedal all the time. And of course, uh, on these ones, uh, sorry, heated front seats on both trims and a heated steering wheel. If you get the premier trim, you can get heated rear outboard seats, not the middle, but the uh, two outboard and a front cooled seats as well if you opt for the leather package, which of course this model has. Same charging capabilities, uh, same everything else uh, from that perspective. And again, I'd be remiss if I didn't remind folks that, you know, globally, GM has sold well over 100,000 bolts since they've started it. These are continuing to be based on the newer design battery pack from 2020 and above that don't have any issues with cells uh, becoming uh, too hot and catching on fire, any of that stuff. These do not have that. They've tweaked the, the battery systems, uh, still working with their partner LG Energy, I believe, on these. Again, what I mentioned on the last show, just take everything with a grain of salt and look at the, the both sides of the equation. Now, as I mentioned, this is called an EUV, which stands for electric utility vehicle, which is really just a fancy name for a compact SUV. And that's really where GM and Chevrolet is focusing this model on. It's got a little bit more, as I mentioned, rugged exterior styling, but it is the same 200 horsepower electric motor. It is the same uh, 266 pound-feet of torque, I believe. The same battery pack at 65 kilowatt hours that's in the Bolt EV. Nothing has changed. And really this is going after the Hyundai or the Hyundai uh, Kona electrics, the Mustang Mach-E to a degree, I would say. Maybe the Tesla Model Y, but you know, the Mustang and the Tesla are different vehicles in this. They are, they are an upscale premium midsize sedan slash crossover vehicle. So I really wouldn't pit this against theirs. It would be a fair comparison, but certainly the, the Kia Niro EV, the, as I mentioned, the Hyundai Kona EV, um, those type of models, certainly this would be good competition for them. So being that this is the same battery uh, pack technology as in the newer uh, Bolt EV, there's really no difference in range. This is rated at 250 miles or just over 400 or so, some odd kilometers on that, um, and which is adequate. And you know, folks, you'll see uh, near the end, well, I'll put up, uh, and I did in the last show, I put up my starting range and my ending range. And, you know, you can calculate the differences and how accurate the, the range meter was and the efficiency. And I'm finding really good efficiencies with the Bolt series. I mentioned that in my 2020 review. I mentioned that in the last review, and I'm gonna say it again in this review. But that's really good, especially when I, you know, I have I had my Tesla now for almost a year, so I'm pretty used to what the efficiencies are. And when I'm running the air in really hot temperatures and doing my driving, you know, it's tough to get kind of in the mid 15s with that, with the air conditioning running all the time. So when I compare the efficiencies, this is really good for, you know, a, 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 a taller, uh, compact SUV type style. Um, I think that, you know, GM is, they're probably underrated in their range. I think people miss, misjudge the range calculations because they're very good. Again, it depends on how you drive, the weather, the terrain, all speeds, all this kind of stuff, I know. But, you know, their, their range estimator, which gives you the maximums and the minimums, and if you, you kind of just drive it normal, I've been driving in one pedal to maximize regeneration, you can achieve pretty close to the upper level of those ranges that they give you.
And one thing about the range is that this vehicle is only about 80 pounds more than the 2022 Bolt EV, so it's really not a big difference. So that's why they have virtually similar range estimates. Um, and again, I, I believe that because I'm getting pretty well identical type ranges that I got with the uh, Bolt when I had it a few weeks ago there. Um, this is very, very similar, uh, if not maybe slightly less, but it's pretty close. So again, my hat's off to GM for what they're doing from an efficiency and a battery management uh, perspective. Now I mentioned the styling, of course, the interior is basically similar to the Bolt um, EV that I had a couple of weeks ago. I like the new design. I like that it's more, uh, you know, toned down color palette, if you want to say. It's not in your face, all these different colors. Um, I like that it's very blended, very subtle, and very functional as well. Now from cargo capacity, it is a little about the same as the Bolt EV, maybe slightly more. Yeah, and with the first row, with the second row up, the cargo space is slightly smaller than the Bolt EV at 462 liters, but when you uh, fold down the rear seats, you're at about 16, 11 liters, which is fairly similar, if not really, really close to the Bolt. So a good amount of cargo space. Again, that height difference is maybe half an inch, if that, from a height, so you don't, that doesn't equate to a much larger interior cargo volume, but with uh, just with that extra little width and a little height, it makes a small difference. Now again, GM Chevrolet is continuing with the safety assist as standard features on both models of the Bolt. And again, it's in on the EUV here. And what you get is a whole suite of safety features, including automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, following distance indicator, forward collision alert, and a telebeam auto head, high beam headlights. And of course, as I mentioned, adaptive cruise control is available on the Premier as an option. And of course, that smart um, cruise capability, which uh, I'll insert a little video in a few minutes. All right, so let's have a quick look at the interior. Again, I won't go through all the details because it's very similar to the Bolt, but I'll just highlight a couple small things. All right, so that back seat, as I mentioned, let's see how it fits here. Um, as I felt, it's got a lot of leg room here. That three inches is where GM has put this, uh, the, the additional roominess of this vehicle. And again, getting in, a slight bend of the head, and then you're up and over. With over a fist of headroom in here, it's pretty good, lots of leg room. This is where you're gonna feel some of the difference here and see the difference for some of the specs. If you're really tall, six feet or more, you're probably gonna bonk your head a little bit here on the top. So again, it's not a huge vehicle. It looks bigger, a lot bigger than the Bolt EV, but dimensional wise, it's very, very similar from an interior. But still, uh, I like the slightly, if, if, unless it's a misnomer, to me, the roof line feels just ever so slightly higher, a little bit easier to get in and out. And the other small differentiator between this, uh, the Bolt EUV and the Bolt EV is that you have a couple of USB ports here. You have an A and a C in the back for passengers to recharge. Uh, it doesn't control the music, um, but there are wireless Bluetooth connectivity. So you could have a rear passenger controlling the music if he or she would like to. One other interior spec that you can get with the Premier trim is this nice moonroof. It's actually a working sunroof as well. You can open it up and um, it will, Pop open and slide. You can stop it during some of those uh, transitions. So if you want to only have it a little bit or a lot, whatever, that's as far as it goes. And then it has a windscreen that pops up here to add some wind protection. It actually works really nice. I drove for a day with this open. Um, even though we've got some stifling heat, it uh, helped a little bit. And it's nice to add the airiness in. Now, when you close this up, of course, if you don't want to have it open and uh, it's a really hot, sunny day and you want to get rid of the heat, then they do have this nice fabric um, cover that powers across and that will cover the sunroof or the moonroof, whatever you want to call it, panoramic roof. It is just fabric, as you can see. It's not really a thick piece, but it's solid and it doesn't let the light in and it does the job for blocking the heat. So a couple things about the interior. Again, as I mentioned, it's pretty well exactly the same as the Bolt um, EV with a couple of different options that you might have engaged. One being the Smart Cruise which I'll insert a quick video, but the display. So the display is still very similar. Hopefully this is coming out okay on camera. Uh, again, the one difference here is that you can upgrade it and add navigation. So it has built-in navigation. Here's a quick video of me with the navigation on just so you can see how responsive it is and what the voice sounds like. All right, so I just thought I'd try the uh, navigation here on the Bolt EUV. As you can see, it's a pretty nice screen. It's color, uh, it's very responsive. 
uh, easy to input your destination and it can, the voice prompts are pretty good. Uh, should get a voice prompt coming up soon just so you can hear um, the voice that they're using. It's a nice pleasant voice. Right to Highway 401 collectors. So yeah, nice calming female voice. I'm sure you can change the voice prompts in here. I haven't really played around with the nav settings. But just wanted to show. Proceed six kilometers on Highway 401 collectors. There you go. So um, this you can zoom in, zoom out, all that kind of stuff. Points of interest, uh, lots of stuff. So it's a nice navigation system. If you don't uh, get the, um, if you don't get this option, you can still use, of course, your phone integration, both connected or wirelessly. All right. So now that you've looked at the interior, let me take you for some uh, of my quick driving impressions. So let me give you my quick driving impressions here um, of the Bolt EUV. So it's gonna be very similar to what it was for the Bolt here. Um, I've been booting around this all week. It's been non-eventful. It's been very easy to drive, uh, easy to maneuver and twist and turn, especially when I was downtown Toronto going through fairly heavy city traffic at the time. Um, it's just a really pleasant vehicle to drive. Um, I feel that I'm sitting even a little higher than in the Bolt EV, which is what I like. I like to sit high and get good visibility. Uh, because this has a little bit longer front, I had to probably put it up a little higher so I could make sure that I comfortably see over it. It's not big, of course, but a little bit different than the Bolt EV. Very quiet car. It's got the exact same suspension, same brake setup, again, same powertrain, so there's no difference there. That 80 pounds of extra weight really doesn't do anything uh, to hamper or change the suspension. What It's a very nice ride. Uh, it's bouncy sometimes a little bit um, over a lot of bounces and because of that compact SUV style you know that shorter wheelbase compared to longer wheelbase vehicles you might hop a little bit but you're not losing you know traction on the road or getting the car or the vehicle out of control in any manner uh, it's a comfortable ride I've had some people in the back seat they've been very comfortable in it nobody's complained it's been very nice the air conditioning everything works really well the co the cooling seats um, I don't I've never had them and but this week with the humidities that we're having pushing 40 plus degrees centigrade Celsius uh, they've been a godsend I'll tell you that having those cooling seats would I buy them probably not but for you know the odd times like this week and a few other times they really uh, paid their dues and you know with climate change and the temperatures getting warmer every year it might be something I might consider in a future purchase vehicle uh, but they've worked really well everything has just worked very well. I haven't, haven't had any hiccups at all. A very pleasant vehicle to drive. Good acceleration, but one pedal driving, easy to master, no problems at all. Um, I, you've seen the, um, I'll insert here uh, some video of the Super Cruise in action uh, and some of my thoughts on that. Um, it's, it's a good system for where it's designed, so remember to take that uh, as advice. All right, so I've activated the Super Cruise here, and as you can see, I got a green uh, LED on the steering wheel and a green wheel on the dash as well, on the binnacle. Um, I'm just following a nice, safe, open highway here, and as you can see, it's taking the turn and it's staying in the lane pretty nicely. The Super Cruise system is a system that's been mapped to about 200,000 miles plus of roadways within North America uh, by GM, so it only works on roads that are mapped into the system. And in what I've experienced so far, which is mainly the 400 series highways in the Southern Ontario or greater Toronto area here, it doesn't work on regional roads or city streets. So the Super Cruise will stay in the lane. It provides positive lane keeping. And of course the adaptive cruise control bundled with that. The um, cruise control uses LIDAR and sensors on this. There's no radar. I believe it's a LIDAR system uh, based. And it works pretty well. As you can see, it's staying in lane. I'm doing a, a nice uh, gradual turn here on the highway and it's staying in lane. Now I've got the phone a little off center because the sensor here on the top of the uh, uh, steering wheel is what's monitoring my face to make sure that I'm continuing looking ahead. If I take my uh, eyes off of the area for a prolonged period of time and say I'm going to talk to somebody or look to a side, it will start giving me warning systems and uh, eventually disconnect if I don't do it. So right now I have not touched the steering wheel since I started recording this. It's been all doing it on its own 
on the highway. And I think Super Cruise is a really good system. It's very similar to in behavior to Tesla's autopilot, not the full self-driving, but the autopilot itself, where you'll get lane keeping and you'll get adaptive cruise control. It works very well, but again, it only works, in my opinion, and from what I could tell, in highway environments when you're going on those longer trips. Autopilot is something that you can use it within the city, um, but this system, if it's not mapped to the road, it won't work and won't engage. So anyway, a little bit on Super Cruise works well. I'm glad that it comes with this vehicle as an option. Um, would I get it if I were to get this vehicle? I'm not sure. I mean, I use autopilot because it comes with my Model 3, but um, would I pay more for it on this vehicle? I don't know. So I'll have to wait and see. So one of the things this vehicle comes with, which I forgot, is the uh, digital rear view mirror. So if you flip this back, you see you get the camera. There is a fifth camera on this vehicle um, that's at the top of the back hatch and it gives you a view which you can adjust the contra the brightness. Uh, you can zoom in or out of this a couple settings and you can move it up and down a little bit for height adjustability. Um, so it gives you a full-time camera view of your rear view mirror which is taking me a little bit of time to get used to. It's pretty good. Um, as you can see by this vehicle here, you can actually see his lights flickering and it's not LED. So he's got some HID bulbs or something, which over time may ignore him, would maybe annoy somebody um, if that happens a lot, but otherwise it's not picking up any other any LED flickering, but a pretty cool feature uh, that comes with this uh, top of the line, Bolt EUV. As advice, uh, but otherwise, I mean, really, this is a great all around easy vehicle to park, easy to move around with the 360 cameras and the front camera and rear camera. You can change different angles for, for camera views. You can park this thing really easily. It's got some sensors as well. And again, that cross traffic alert that I talked about in the Bolt EV works really well. It's a great system that GM has. I would say it's even better than Tesla's rear cross traffic alert system because sometimes my Tesla doesn't warn me until it's really, really close. Um, this is uh, gets you the warns you about the traffic a much farther away. So good vehicle and easy to drive, um, and people will get right in this and not even know really that it's electric. Same on the binnacle menuing system. I'm not going to go through it. Um, this is a full charge status. I just charged it last night for the first time. The full charge, as you can see, it's giving me 453 kilometers with a potential max of 534 if I'm driving real slow and easy and using uh, one pedal driving and a minimum of 371 if I'm driving like a bat out of the cave that's uh, looking for something. So it a, picks a good medium. I think one thing I've noticed about the bolts, uh, the previous bolt, the one that I just, uh, the 2022 Bolt EV, and then I'm assuming that this one's gonna be very similar, is that the range estimates are fairly accurate. In fact, they might be underestimated, and that's why they give you the min and the max, because if you drive a little bit more conservative, you can creep up into that max range. And, you know, if I can get 500 kilometers out of this, that's really good. I mean, this is, you know, hardest summer, it's good temperatures. But uh, that's really good for a decent sized vehicle that this is in a compact SUV. I think that's really nice. Um, so um, I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, at 400 kilometers as a minimum without even trying to really drive easy is a very achievable in these in the winter temperatures, um, you know, from, from that perspective. And then again, just the different menuing systems. You can have the nav showing here if you want. Um, you can uh, have the music showing here and you control it from there. Um, I like leaving the instrumentation so I can have different uh, things, tire pressure, your average speeds, all that kind of stuff. So um, the range is what's really impressive on this. Uh, and then again, I do like the, the steering wheel on this. It's very similar to the Bolt EV, obviously with the, with the Smart Cruise, which I'll show you. It has the LED strip for that for indicating what's going on there. Uh, but certainly the, the controls on here, they light up at night. I'm in the garage, so the lights are on on auto. So you can see the controls. They're nice, much more um, haptic. Uh, they're not the haptic feedback. They actually push buttons on some of them. Some of them are just uh, uh, indicators of what to do. Um, but, you know, nice, comfortable cockpit, just like in the Bolt uh, EV. Uh, the front's a little longer, so the visibility is a little bit... Uh, uh, higher on this uh, you do I, I have the seat fairly high so I can see over the dash nicely um, what that does though is one thing I've noticed is that it does drop the rear view mirror kind of into the center of the windshield for me so this is an angle for my eye line uh, out the front and as you can see uh, it took me it takes me a little bit of while just to get used to the mirror being there I wish that this mirror was up about here like a little bit closer to the top maybe an inch inch and a half up or an inch up 
that that would work. Um, it's not, I'm getting used to it. So it's just, again, something's a little bit different. Um, it just seems, uh, because this is a smaller vehicle than, you know, my Tesla or some of the others I've driven, that it's kind of plunked right in the middle. So from, from the driver's eye line, you know, this is exactly my eye line as I put the camera in front of me. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. But otherwise, it's a very comfortable dash layout and everything is very reachable and similar to the Bolt EV. And last part on the instrumentation on the infotainment here, there is a much more um, uh, detailed backup camera system uh, on this uh, upgraded model. This is the uh, Premier. Uh, model of the Bolt EUV, the top of the line. It's got all the options. Um, it does have the 360 camera, as you can see, uh, which is very similar to many systems. It has the indicator for the rear, and then you can get parking assist. You can get your different views if you want the front camera, which is handy if you're going into a front parking space um, and you want to see where you are, or you can get the rear view, of course, here. You can get some of the side views if you want uh, much more um, uh, to see where you are for the different curbs, which is cool, split view, uh, rear views, that kind of stuff. So it's pretty good that way. Um, and then your lines and then indicators here that you can full screen or not full screen if you want, depending on and have the lines indicated. Uh, and then of course, um, this is pretty cool as it compilates an overview, uh, you know, kind of a section of a zoom of the 360. Uh, so you can get different aspects of that. I think that that's a pretty, pretty neat idea. So you take this 360 and you zoom in a little bit so that you can see where you are. So in this case, if I'm lining up with the rear with my garage door to make sure that I'm not too close to the garage door when it closes. I have an indication here of, uh, of how far I am. Uh, not exact measurement details, like Tesla will give you the with the uh, sensors, the indications, but the door would have to be closed. So, you know, handy features um, for, uh, you know, negotiating the vehicle around in uh, tight situations. Hope you enjoyed that. So let me focus uh, and close the show by talking about pricing. One of the things I mentioned on the Bolt EV is that GM has aggressively priced them to sell, hopefully. It doesn't matter how low, they, how aggressive they are, folks. I hope they sell because we need more butts into EVs for sure. So get rid of those tailpipes. And this is no different. They price this at just a couple thousand dollars more than the Canadian base price. This is at 40,198 as a base MSRP Canadian dollars. It's only $2,000 more than the Bolt EV. I think it's $2,000 well spent. If you went just with the base LT trim, so there's a, there are two trims in the EUV. There's the LT and a Premier. This is the Premier with all the goodies. Out the door with the, with the federal rebate of $5,000 applied, tax in with zero down, no trade, you'd be looking at around 53,000 or so out the door for the Premier. If you were to downshift that a bit on pricing and look at the LT model and just take all the standard options, you'd be out the door at around $42,500 to $43,000. Again, with the federal $5,000 rebate applied, zero down, no trade, just you know bare dollars. If you're in other provinces, as I mentioned in the last show, uh, if you're in BC, Quebec, or a bunch of the other provinces that have provincial incentives, you can apply those to this and stack them in addition to the $5,000. 
So in Quebec, where they have, I believe, an $8,000 um, package, you can get $13,000 off this vehicle, and that 53, you know, now becomes closer to the low 40s, if not, you know, potentially, uh, potentially sub 40, depends, because tax changes things. For a loaded vehicle like this, with the range and everything it has, and the characteristics and the utility it provides, I think is a real winning formula. All right, so I'm gonna to try to fast charge this vehicle because I haven't charged, I didn't charge the Bolt EV. So I am at an electrified Canada station. It's a 150 kilowatt CCS station. There's nobody else next to me. And uh, I'm the only one basically plugged in that I will be plugged into the station. So right now the um, Bolt EUV is at about 26% state of charge, 28%. I've got uh, 118 kilometers remaining. So I've drained it to, I think, to a point where it'll make sense to do a fast charge. I'll go down the window here. So I'll plug it in and let's see how close to that 60 kilowatts we'll be able to get. All right, so I've plugged in and uh, it started at about 52, 53 kilowatts. That's kind of where it's sitting at. At um, 50 minutes, it's telling me to get to 80%. Started at about 26, 27% of charge. Uh, been charging for about three minutes. So as you can see, this is not super fast charging. It's not ultra fast charging. I moved to a 350 kilowatt CCS charger here just to get the, because uh, the other one wasn't working. In fact, two of them here aren't working very well. So it's not very good for Electrified Canada today. But as you can see, so 50 minutes, 80% at roughly around 25% or so charge is, is a long time by comparison to the newer EVs and, and the Teslas that are out there, the, the different models of the Tesla uh, vehicles. But again, if this is a vehicle that you're not gonna do a lot of road, road tripping, doesn't mean you can't, you can certainly do this because after 50 minutes or so, um, I'll have 350 to 450 kilometers of range, probably closer to 400, let's say, maybe 380 enough for a good three hours of driving anyway um, so it's not bad so it depends on your driving circumstances i know people that have taken the bolt across the u.s you plan for the trip you enjoyed the stops so it, it's different for everybody but if you don't have to fast charge a lot and you're you know you, you need a, either a second vehicle or a primary vehicle doing a lot of driving to work and around town this is an excellent vehicle i was hoping that it would pull a little more than 53 kilowatts, hoping that it would start, you know, pushing closer to 60, but maybe because I chart, I started it higher than 20%, that could be something to do with it. But that's, that's what's happening here. So it's okay, it's not fantastic. It's certainly not to where the new norm is nowadays for charging habits, but I think it's still a very functional fast charging vehicle. All right, just wanted to finally explain the uh, range situation that I was able to get for this week. As you can see, I started with a range maximum of 534, minimum of 371 kilometers at 100% charge. Uh, it evened out at about 453. And then my ending range here was 139, sorry, 118 kilometers in the middle, 139 max or 96 minimum if I was going to stomp on it all the time. So about 118. Um, my distance, as you can see here, was about 310 kilometers, and my average efficiency was 15.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, or 151 kilowatt hours per kilometer. So overall, pretty good efficiency, and that's one thing I was surprised at. This was a combination of city and some highway driving that I did. Um, the state of, end state of charge on that battery was 26% from 100. Um, so again, I did uh, um, the distance of 310 kilometers using about 75% uh, of the battery. All right, so what's my recommendation on this? Well, you guys already know it's going to be a big thumbs up. Same to the Bolt EV. I think it's a great vehicle. I've enjoyed the time that I've spent with this vehicle. It's been a pleasure to drive. I've done a good amount of driving, both on highway and city. Even had to go through crazy downtown Toronto traffic and some quote-unquote rush hour type situations. This was very pleasant to work with, uh, to deal with and to drive, and I had no issues at all, very comfortable ride. So again, I wanna thank GM Canada for letting me use of this vehicle. And as I mentioned, I would encourage you to check it out. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you found it informative. And uh, you know, again, if you're on the fence thinking about a all electric vehicle, you know, this is one good candidate among many others that are out there and more coming this year. So it's an exciting time. Thanks for watching on YouTube. I appreciate it. If you have not subscribed, please do. I would like it a lot if you did. You could follow my antics here on the channel. 
as I try to bring relevant stories, reviews, and event coverage that makes sense to educate and inform. Of course, if you're a Patreon supporter, always very humbled by that. Thank you very much. You know who you are. You can check out the link below and find more information if you want to support me that way. Keep your eyes on the EV landscape. As I mentioned, tons of stuff happening. It's just now the explosion is there where the floodgates are pretty well open and over the next next mid, up until the mid part of this decade at least and beyond we will see a ton of new uh, electric vehicles come out so it's exciting times and i would encourage you again to if you're looking for an electric vehicle make a decision as soon as you can don't wait for that next best thing don't don't wait for you know this and that other stuff if you can do something now and it fits your lifestyle and use case do it because we really need to accelerate the change to sustainable transportation and i highlight those words so please do again thank you very much for watching everybody continue to stay safe and until the next episode i will see you when i see you take care and bye bye